Hey guys, here we are, 2,000 followers, Tips That Won't Hurt You series, episode three. We're gonna talk about using the ground. Um, thanks a lot for your support. I really can't believe it. I didn't think uh, I could reach 2,000 followers so soon, especially since I haven't been around a ton lately. Uh, but you have to know that I'm working on a bigger project to bring you value, to help you improve your golf game. So stay tuned, be patient. I'm really trying to, uh, to go as fast as possible to launch this project. Obviously, this little strange period of, of time with this virus is interfering a little bit, especially for, for us doctors. It's really taxing on our free time. But I'll make sure to um, gather all the strength you gave me and turn it into a project that could be game-changing for you. Um, and again, a big thank you to people who have been sharing my content and giving me feedback. That helps a lot. You guys are amazing. So as I said, today we're talking about using the ground. Uh, it's something that gets really emphasized these days and for a good reason. Uh, but as you all know, I like being precise. I like describing the motions for where they are and leaving the least space for misinterpretation. And I think it's especially important right now since you are all at home and uh, you have time to work on your technique without interference. And at the same time, you're exposed to a ton of information. So I think it's a good idea to give you key points uh, to know what you can take home and what you need to discard. Now let's be clear, I'm not going to say that using the ground is not important. Uh, that would be silly and going against all these, the golf instruction currents that study ground reaction forces. Um, it's super important. We cannot move properly if we don't have contact with the ground, period. Uh, the ground gives us something to push against as we want to get lighter in the backswing. When we drop down and then fire through impact, we need that resistance that the ground gives us. Remember that the long hitters, these 120 plus club ahead speed guys, they manage to roughly double their body weight when you see that big peak in the left foot pressure uh, when the shaft is vertical. And that's how they are using uh, the ground to increase their club head speed. So ground forces are super important. And lastly, without contact with the ground, we cannot really rotate. We, we need that these contact on the, the right foot and the left foot to use shear forces to get rotation. And uh, even though you can see that sometimes the foot move all over the place, uh, that's actually a good sign. And that, that's, uh, that's, that's something we need to study and we need to do correctly uh, to get the most out of our bodies. So ground reaction forces are super important. Where the problem occurs, in my opinion, is when people take this true but relatively vague concept, if you don't go further, and misinterpret it. So sometimes something true will be more hurtful uh, than total BS. And, and I'm here today to show you that if you use this use the ground idea in a bad way, uh, it could do way more harm than good. And we're going to take a look at three situations. All right, so the first one would be to picture the swing as having two phases. We're talking about the backswing and the downswing. Easy, right? So if we're trying to use the ground, why not use two phases to use the ground correctly and, and load and squat and then explode? And that's definitely something you need to avoid. Flexing the hips, flexing the knees, getting leverage in the, in the backswing, trying to, to squat and then use the ground is going to trigger a ton of bad things. Uh, it's not super commonly taught because Obviously, it's really false, but I still see it being taught somewhere. Um, so be aware of that fallacy. There is no two phases in the, in the golf swing. If anything, there might be three if you really want to get uh, this concept and these phase into your brain. Um, you could picture things like having a first phase where you get lighter. That's what the pressure research uh, tends to uh, explain to us. Um, so you, you're trying to get lighter. If you follow Lucas Wall, you might know that he's evocating a, a right load and an up load. So you can then drop down and then fire. So um, actually when you load is in that, that second phase where you're trying to, to get wide to narrow, trying to load the club, to lag it, whatever. 
you are also increasing your body weight as, as i said earlier trying to leverage the ground here so you can then fire through impacts so some people call that third phase the release the impact zone um Kelly Miyahira used to call it second fire, whatever. Picturing the swing like that with three phases is much more accurate and that's how you should see, um, how you should load and explode. Try to picture it happening in the, in the second and third phase. Like here we're trying to get light, we're trying to get moving, and then here we're trying to load and then the explosion comes here. Um, so that's the first point I wanted to make. The second issue that I see quite often is the idea that we need to push off that left foot all right there are a few things that really don't fit the way i see things and the way i see the best um, use their body um we need contact with the ground to move to rotate um anatomical moves can be seen in an open chain fashion which means the extremity is free so if i lift my foot and i have no contact this is external rotation of the right hip but if i'm in closed change which means the extremity cannot really move external rotation of my hip can be seen if you look at my pelvis like if all this cannot move and even my kneecap let's say it cannot move if i do external rotation of my right hip look what happens to my pelvis my pelvis has, has uh, rotated thanks to this contact point on the ground so <laughs> If you're trying to push off that left of that right foot, sorry, you are giving away that that contact point, and you cannot use these cool right hip moves to get rotation, and and therefore you might end up in internal rotation with no gas in the tank through impact. You may also, in a way, if you're picturing the pelvis moving, it needs to pivot on on some axis, so. If I'm posted on the left, if I have pushed off the ground, this right hip cannot be the pivot point. This left hip needs to be the, the pivot point. So the only way to rotate my pelvis is to rotate that hip around that, that right part of the pelvis around the left. But as you can see, it's not super functional. If, if anything, it, it will trigger early extension, make me lose my spine angle, all these cool things that we want to see. Um, if on the contrary if that hip can stay that leg can stay can stay the axis for just a little longer i'm able to have this fixed and be the pivot and my left side of the pelvis gain depth and rotate to get to here where it's in the proper position to then fire so that's why i really don't like that idea of pushing off the right foot um when you are going to look at all these swings that I'm going to show you now, look at the right toe. Look at the right toe and the overall motion of the right foot. Most of, the, of these guys that I'm going to show you exhibit a little clockwise rotation of the right foot. So how could they push off the instep or push to get left if their foot is going that way? No, they are using the ground, they are torquing. If, if they practice a lot on the same spot, you'll see, you'll see the grass being torn that way. And that's because they use their body properly. They shift from left lateral bend to right lateral bend and that's more than enough to shift their weight. Here, as you can see, I didn't stay on my right side. I shifted 
going from left lateral bend to right lateral bend and it's more than enough to give me that pressure spike and I'm still using that ground and using that hip to be the pivot point so I can gain depth with the pelvis so sorry to be so long but um, I need you need to have arguments to debunk that thing and not hurt yourself um, lastly if you push off that right foot look what it's doing to my to my hip it's putting it in abduction which is this move foot is on the ground close change so this it's putting me in right pelvic tilt i cannot really bend from there otherwise i'll fight it so it will get rid of my rotation if i really push hard on that right foot and here from there i just have a jump and a flip left to do so again don't do it <laughs> if that wasn't clear enough don't do it and lastly the third thing where using the ground could be greatly misinterpreted is if you really want to have that spike that that spike of pressure in the left foot you may be tempted to do that like to really get down and pinned and trying to to squash to squish something here um, that's not how they do it either pay close attention to what's happening in my hip as you can see I'm sliding I'm flexing the hip and flexing the knee without getting any pelvic rotation like here I'm going to try and squish something under my left foot if I do it improperly like that look I have zero rotation and that's what that's not what the guys I'm going to show you exhibit here So, so if you do that and it's almost close to the hip bump, the, the closed hip bump concept, you're not getting pelvic rotation. You're really not doing anything with your spine. And if anything, you'll get rotation after a ball is gone. How useful is that? Anyway, um, your left hip is going to get way too much in internal rotation. It's going to get in adduction and you're not going to create space. It should go in flexion if anything stay neutral go abduction and i know we're supposed to replant closed and have internal rotation but doing this is taking it to an extreme and i see that being taught quite often so again stay away from that advice uh, three things that you can take home to use the ground properly try and see the ground being used by in three phases getting a lighter on the backswing then dropping down thanks to um, your spine movements and your pelvic movements use the ground correctly with your right foot on the ground so you're not pushing off of it try and get the pressure left by having rotation and by having correct spine mechanics so you can get that left hip deep propelling you towards that that second fire that we all want. Um, I hope it helps. Uh, sorry for being too long, but I really, I haven't been posting a ton. I really want you to get you great content and that's kind of difficult in one minute or two minutes. So I really hope it clears something out. I hope I didn't make any, I didn't make too much enemies in that video. Uh, using the ground is super important, but be careful um, how you do it. Um, that being said, uh, happy Easter and stay home, stay safe and talk to you guys soon.